Hello everyone, welcome to our online service here at St Giles. Uh, we're co re continuing to record these services um, and review them when the shielding ends on the 1st of August. So you're very welcome whenever and wherever you join us from. We hope you enjoy uh, being with us online to worship and we hope that uh, you might come and visit us in person um, as well. Our services in person are 8.30, 10.30 and 6.30. The 10.30 is our busiest service so if you're cautious about um, coming out or or, um, or the risk uh, we have got protocols in place um, to keep you as safe as we can but uh, if you're nervous please do try the 8.30 or the 6.30 um, service in the morning or in the evening they're a little bit quieter there's a little bit more space for you otherwise just enjoy our online worship which as I say we're continuing we're going to take a moment as we begin to still our hearts in the presence of God, wherever we are. And I'm going to pray the church's special prayer for the day afterwards. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The New Testament reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of the shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until it, all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone has found and hidden, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put, it, put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are watching from home or reading from the weekly pack, the chances are you were not able to get into church last week, which was our return to worship in church first day. Because it was such an important new start post coronavirus lockdown and Reverend Nathan's first Sunday worship with any of us actually present, the Easter candle was blessed and lit signifying our new start as an Easter people moving forward together. It was really nice and everything was very carefully organised so that we all felt very safe and happy to be back. Now it may be a little while before everyone feels okay to venture out but rest assured all is well and when the time is right for you a warm if socially distanced welcome awaits you. The theme of an Easter people moving forward together 
following Jesus in Godward ways, is a thread we can see in today's Gospel reading, but as with all Jesus' parables, we can only get to grips with what it means for us when we look for the context in which it was first spoken. This was a time when people were growing wheat, often as a subsistence crop, so it had to do well or folks went hungry. The weed, called bearded darnel, looked just the same as wheat when they were growing together, but it was poisonous, and so it really did have to be got rid of. But when? Try to get it out too early, and you might pick out the good plants by mistake, and hungry mouths depend on the success of those plants. Pick it out too late, and it might be missed and spoil the batch of flour and make people ill. This weeding had to be timed exactly right to maximise crop and reduce risk. So we are talking patience and discernment and the enormous importance of getting it right. And what does it mean when the farmer says an enemy has introduced the weeds. Well, Jewish people of the day believed that these poisonous tares originated before the flood when everything was far from the way God wanted things to be. And it is with this thought in mind that we can now move fairly easily to start thinking about things which are godly, how God wants them to be, and things which are ungodly things which are not as God wants them to be. The farmer in the parable is of course God. When then should he deal with the ungodly people who are spoiling his harvest crop? And the answer has to be from the parable that God will not act without great care for he wants to maximise the crop. He will be very patient and take time for discernment, because the crop is without a doubt a matter of life or death, a crop of infinite value, and so he waits until his time is right. That is God's perspective on things. But what about ours? Are we like the people in the parable saying, Let's get on in there right now and start weeding out the bad stuff. And does that desire lead us to thoughts like, why doesn't God do something about all this bad stuff which is going on in the world? It's his harvest. Why doesn't he weed it? Or to the kind of thinking which underpins sentences just like this. It's hard to believe in God who lets people do such things. Set in the light of the parable, what is it exactly that we want God to do? Pluck out those who are ungodly right now, this moment, a thunderbolt maybe, and rid the world of offenders. And would we want him to do that for all offences or just those which offend us? the most. For instance, if I think an ungodly thought or withhold a godly action, do you think I should get the immediate thunderbolt treatment? Who chooses the level of ungodliness whereupon we would be happy for God to intervene? I do not think I would even have attained my 20th birthday had some Christian folk been making these decisions rather than God, the God who is infinitely patient, endlessly loving, and whose discernment and holiness is absolute. So God waits. He takes no hasty action for his crop is incredibly valuable. Even though much of what we do must sadden his heart, he waits 
and allows us to learn and change, to become more godly. So that when he finally decides to bring in his harvest, more and more of his children will be safely gathered in. Think about it. If God were to rule the world with immediate and direct action, St Peter would have been struck down and never gone on to lead the church. St Paul would never have become the greatest evangelist of all time. And most of us wouldn't have made it very far either. So the teaching for us from the parable about farming, which Jesus told more than 2,000 years ago, is that we, his Easter people, committed to following Jesus in Godward ways, have time and opportunity to move forward together, to help and support and encourage each other as we try to become more and more godly. It's not too late. In fact, it's the perfect time because God is waiting with his infinite patience and endless love. And so, to close in prayer. May God give us his grace to follow the saints and grow in faith and love and become more and more as he wants us to be this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. And the response to our prayers this week, the response to in faith we pray is we pray to you, our God. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. Lord, we ask you today to listen to the prayers of your people who are gathered at your table. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. Here, where we celebrate how Christ gave us his body to be our spiritual food, would you listen and incline your ear as we pray for his body, the church, spread throughout the world. We pray for our church at St Giles in Aintree and we pray for the other churches in, in the village that we seek to serve. In faith we pray, we pray to you our God. Here at this table where we recognise the presence of Christ who takes away the sin of the world, listen as we pray for that world and for its peoples for whom his blood was shed. And so we take a moment to pray for those places that are experiencing conflict and tribulation at this time. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. Lord, this table we come together around as Christ gathered with his friends to give us this meal of holy fellowship. So would you hear us as we pray for all whom you have given us, our friends and all whose lives are joined with ours in earth and in heaven, those near and far. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. Here where we remember the night of Christ's agony and trial, would you listen as we pray for all who share his sufferings in any way through fear or pain or distress of any kind? And we ask for your presence to be especially near those this day. In a moment of silence we Consider those who especially need our prayers at this time, who are feeling in similar situations. And as is our privilege as Christians, we pray for those who have no one on earth to pray for them except ourselves. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. 
Lord, in this fellowship where we join our praises with the whole company of heaven. Would you listen as we pray for all who have trusted Christ's promise to raise up on the last day those who eat his flesh and drink his blood. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. And so, Lord, would you fill our hunger with the good food that lasts, the bread of God which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, from sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with a light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, in the never ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, this bread and this wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, O Lord, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
as our Saviour has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, for though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Thanks everyone for joining us uh, for this online worship um, at St Giles. Um, I'll be back with a, another service next week, but it just remains for me to give you a final blessing uh, before we go out into this week. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God give you his peace in your going out and your coming in and your lying down and your rising up in your labour and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until you come with all who you love and pray for to stand before Jesus in that day where there is no sunset and no dawning. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, go with you. Amen. <laughs>